So today I'll be talking about very briefly about the patient is no longer patient. And more specifically, I will help you to create better patient experiences. And I'll give you two tips, two very concrete, easy to use tips that you can apply in each of your businesses. First, a brief introduction. Um, as said, my name is Christophe Joquet. It's a, it's a good French tongue. Um, I call myself a health business expert. I've been working in and with pharma for about 25 years now, um, mostly to help with customer experience or patient experience, sometimes with innovation and future trends. I'm also the author of this book um, because I really believe in something which is called health enthusiasm. And I'll talk about it in my talk, um, but in say what it does is it brings pharma into the outside world and I bring the outside world into pharma. Now, what is health enthusiasm? I'll come to that in a second. Just a little bit more promo. This is somebody who read the book, who's on the cover, etc. And what he said is that it really helps us to understand patients better, customers better, and to create better solutions for them. In the book in itself, what I try to avoid is to use the word healthcare. Because I believe it's too much of an on-off switch. What I believe is that we are talking about health enthusiasm. Everybody wants to be healthy and happy. If I would ask you in the room who does not want to be healthy and happy, there's nobody who, who raises their hand, right? Everybody wants to be healthy and happy. We're constantly occupied with our health and happiness. And we see that in the number of actions that we're taking to improve our health. We're more than ever conscious and we have more than ever tools to impact our own health. This is what I call health enthusiasm. And a consequence of that is that Instead of putting the physician at the center of the health universe and having a patient centered around it, we're actually living what I call a Copernican health revolution and the patient is putting himself at the center. And there's a lot of options that he or she has and the physician is perhaps only one of them. Still a very important one, but only one of them. And what we see is that where we typically thought that a consumer would take lifestyle decisions and a patient would take medical decisions, that a lot more decisions are relevant today. There's health prevent preventative decisions. There are also well-being decisions that make you feel better. And health enthusiasm is all that in between. And what we see is that whether you are a patient or whether you are a consumer, increasingly people are taking decisions that are impacting their own health and happiness. And definitely the middle part there, the self-care part, is something which has been grown massively. Between 2005 and 2015, the search terms on self-care quadrupled. After that, it doubled again. Just the search terms on Google, um, on Google effect effectively. And so the wellness and self-care industry has become a 4.7 trillion business. That is twice as big, twice as big as the entire global expenditures on healthcare in the world, and four times, almost four times as big as the entire healthcare industry. That's how big self-care and healthcare uh, and wellness is. And so to me, health enthusiasm is really the aspiration that we all have to be healthy and happy. And the fact that people are more engaged than ever in their health. So I myself, I'm very much annoyed when I hear this. When physicians or anybody in healthcare say, well, you know what, patients, they're not motivated. Because to me, that's totally um, not true. And then they, they argue, say, no, yeah, but you're talking about consumers, you're talking about patients, that's not the same thing. It's true, it is not the same thing. They have different needs, but they're also in a different experience, they're in a different situation. If you are a patient, you're in an uncomfortable situation, you're anxious, you have very few options, hardly any information, the outcome of your solution is very unclear and there's no after sales or no service or no anything afterwards. A, pay and a consumer is totally different. What he has is freedom. He or she has his freedom, excitement. They have many options, transparent info. There's a clear outcome and there's even you can, can even get your money back if you're not happy. That is what the consumer experience is. So indeed, it is totally different. But let me ask you one thing. What do you prefer? What is the experience that you prefer? And so if you look at what patients really want from the healthcare industry as a whole, is better experiences. Because that engages them, because that is really what they want. And I'll give you two tips to actually come to that point, to actually be able to create better experiences that patients would want today. And for that, you need to have one thing in mind. You need to understand how to create value for them. And what is value creation? Value is going from commodities to products, because products is more valuable. Okay? People are, are ready to pay more, and it creates more engagement. But you need to go to services, maybe, or maybe even to exper experiences. To explain this model very, very easily, let me go to the gym industry. This is a halter, it costs about 20 euros if you have a couple of them, and you can work out your whole life. This is what you're ready to pay for, and your engagement might be, nah, so-so. 
A gym, well, there you pay 20 euros per month, but it's a service that everything is bought for you, and your engagement might be slightly higher. But if you go to a spinning class, that's where the experience is, you're ready to pay 20 euro per session and your engagement will be way higher, because it's fun, right? You're sitting on a bike, you're high-fiving, there's loud music, there's lots of light, somebody's yelling at you. This is the experience you want. And that's why you are ready to pay for that. And so in healthcare, what I believe is that we're too much focused on creating those products and services because we're only focused on one thing and one thing only, and that is a medical need. And to me, this is one thing that I keep on repeating everywhere I go speaking, is that this is the biggest mistake we're making in healthcare, is we think about only the medical need of a patient. And then we come up with this and we expect this to be a very good experience. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but my point is, don't just focus on the medical need. Take into account two more stuff, two more things. And one of them is the expectations. Because, you know, we have this habit, we have these expectations. I mean, if you order something online, the next day it's delivered to your door. Right? If I lose my credit card, it takes me seven days to get a new credit card. I don't expect it to be seven days. This is the difference that we're having. We want to have the expectations that we have when we deliver something on Amazon or whatever online. Right? And it's the same when we are patients. Our expectations are exactly the same when we are patients and when we are consumer. So that's why we're not satisfied with the experience that we're having when we are a patient. And so, Instead of just focusing on the medical need to create a product or a service, what we need to do is think about how can we create a better experience. And for that, we need to take into account the expectations of people. We need to understand what their expectations are. And these expectations are driven by all of our experiences in our life, whether it's with Spotify or Amazon or whatever it may be. Any great expectations that we're having there, we're expecting exactly the same thing in healthcare. There's no reason for a patient at least, that we don't have that experience in healthcare. But nevertheless, in healthcare, this is wonderful word, patiently waiting. Everything in healthcare is waiting, whether it's waiting for an appointment, a referral, the right medication, or even to get better. It's all about waiting, which makes no sense at all if this is the real world out there. We live in a world, if you push on the button, the next second you are in a driverless Uber. Well, maybe not driverless, but you are in an Uber within three, four minutes. This is what we're living in. And it goes farther or it comes even closer to us. These are the Google search terms for near me solutions. They have exploded. This is the reality. People want solutions close to them. If you're walking in the street, you want to see whether you're sick or not. This is what Teraflu did. But we did the same thing with COVID in airports, right? We want solutions close to us like being a good doctor in China is doing. Ten thousands of these cabinets are put everywhere around close to supermarkets. And what are they doing? On the, on the right hand side what you have is a telehealth consultation with a physician. On the left hand side you get immediately your prescription medication. This is what is happening. It's bringing the, 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 the services, the medical services, closer to where people are. Or you can even drive it to them, which, is, which Philips is really, uh, building right now. Making solutions better, better experience by bringing it near them. But it goes even farther, further. You can have real-time solutions. The real objective by Google is to provide you with an answer without you asking the question. That is what they really want to do. It's been, it's been that way since 20 years, and they're getting close to that. Because if your Google is linked with anything in your phone, the moment you arrive in the airport, there's a ticket that will pop up. If you arrive at Avis, you, you have that car rental document that you need that is popping up notified on your uh, screen. Even the smart speakers out there, it's not just about looking up for information, having a list of you know, potential websites. You ask a question, you get the answer. This is where we go into it. It's real-time answers like medical chatbots could provide. And definitely, if we go into the future with everything related to OpenAI, BART, and all of those kind of large language models. But it goes even further when everything becomes predictive. Um, you biome 23 and me, whatever it may be, whether it's biome analysis or DNA analysis, what it provides is insights in who you are and what the solutions could be. In the States already, there are solutions that tell you, based on your DNA, what type of medication will work with you for anti in antidepressant or Alzheimer's and what might not. And this is sold in supermarkets. I myself worked on projects with supermarkets where they say, look, we took your uh, microbiome and we recommend in your online basket to change these elements because your microbiome needs to be better. 
This is what's happening. It's predictive, it's helping people with what they need. Customer expectations are changing. We're in an on-demand world, we're in a near-me world, we're in a real-time world, we're even slowly getting into a predictive world. This is just one small example of how customer expectations are changing, and I have even 10 more if you want. So these are the 12, I would say, customer expectations I write about in my book that explain how people are actually changing or having different expectations and how healthcare should implement it as well. And how do you do it? Is you look at your patient journey and you find those moments where you can actually help them and meet those expectations. Not just the needs, but the expectations. And what you get is a solution like this, for example. MedBell in the States is what are they doing. When you get operated surgery, um, there is somebody you can always call to have that information. What is happening? When do I need to get in the hospital? Um, what documents do I need? What insurance do I have? This is a service that meets the expectations of people when they actually need it. So the first step is definitely take into account not only just the needs, but also the expectations of people. But if you look at the value creation model, as I presented earlier, you can even go one step further. Um, this is the way that value is created in gyms, but today the way that it is created is with personal coaches. Now what personal coaches do, do is not only a very nice and lively and convenient, a fun session, but they will listen to your aspirations. They will listen to what you want to achieve, and you will not only pay the 20 euros per session, but you will pay 60 euros per session, because that is the value that you are ready to pay and you will be way more engaged than with any, other, any of the other solutions in the fitness industry. Same goes for this solution. Wonderful, but if you go one step further, there's a new solution in the States that is called Patient Partner, and they partner you up with another patient to not only tell you what you need at what moment, but also tell you the human parts of it that help you ex understand what aspirations you can have and how things are changing when you undergo the, the same process as um, they did. So it's really about going from experiences to transformations, uh, as I like to call it, which is an experience that makes you feel better, healthier, or happier, as I describe here. When you want to create value, when you want to engage people, you need to think about how can we help people to get to those transformations moments, and for that you need to understand their life aspirations. Aspirations is one thing that we have more and more. Our basic and our social needs are largely filled. And today, people become more aspirational. And if you look at um, the way that people go about, for example, retirement, well, that's, that's where I believe you can see it best. There used to be 20, 30 years ago when people would retire, they would say, I've done my job. I've done my part. I've worked my whole life. Now I will travel to the countries I want to see. I will do the hobby that I want to do. Today, that's no longer the case. What you see is that people that are young, they already do the travels that they want to do. They're already making from their hobby their own personal startup or project or whatever you may call it. People have aspirations to become the best version of themselves and this is what we see more and more. These aspirations become the actual new needs. It's what makes people really happy. We talked about it in the, or the previous speakers talked about uh, somebody who stopped their chemo because uh, she was afraid for losing her hair and her you know, husband might not be attracted to her. That's an exact live aspiration. People want to look good and potentially it might impact how they go about their own treatments. And it's not about looking at patient journeys in this case. It's really about moving away from those touch points and it's really about understanding what is important in their lives. In my second book, which is coming out um, in 2024, I really explain 24 different aspirations and how you can play into them. But just as a, as, as a quick um, example, you need to take those aspirations to find those, cu to those customer uh, transformations. But if you are, for example, working in epilepsy and you know the needs and you know the expectations that they might have in the um, actual patient journey, well, if you understand that the most important thing for an epileptic patient is to feel safe or even only to accept that they are sick and that they have a progressive disease, well, if you can bring that into your communication, if you can bring that into the solution that you provide, you will have a lot more value that you created for them and you have a lot more engagement from them for sure. Same goes, for example, in Crohn's disease, where people sometimes stay in-house, don't want to go out, don't want to meet people because they are scared to have an exacerbation and, and, and maybe shame themselves in, in public. They need to prevent stress. They w still want to have meaningful connections. And this is the live aspiration that you can try to help them with in whatever solution that you provide them. 
And this is the second thing. You have needs, you have expectations, and you have life aspirations. If you can meet all three, this is how you build the best experience for your patient. And this is exactly what patients want, because the patient is no longer patient, as I said. He, puts, he or she puts himself at the center of their own health, uh, because they want to be empowered, because they feel like they can do something. This is what I call health enthusiasm, the aspiration of being healthy and happy. The fact that we more than ever are conscious about our health and are actually actively involved in impacting our own health as well. And so when physicians or anybody in healthcare say, well, patients, they're not really motivated, that really gets me angry because we need better experiences. And the way that you can do it is by creating a great value for them more value than we are doing today. And the two tips that I gave you today is actually think about the fact that, yeah, maybe between consumers and patients, the needs are entirely different, but the expectations and the aspirations of people are in fact exactly the same. And so in any solution that you bring to your patients or to, to the market, I would say, this, these are the two things that you need to take into account. What are the expectations of people based on all the experiences that they have in other parts of their life, and what are the aspirations in their life? What is really important to them? What makes a difference? And this is how then you can create these experiences or customer transformations. My name is Christophe Choquet. I thank you for your attention. <laughs>